Today on Hoopy Doodle, we're making classic chopper moves here, and we're taking this trailer fender and we're making it into this motorcycle fender. All right, so I've got a fender for the Honda Grom. It's a trailer fender that I got at Northern Tool. It is this brand here, tie down brand. And the problem for me in getting fenders for this guy is that the dimensions were just hard to get. I'm okay with making the fender wider or shorter if I need to, but making sure it was even close to the right curve of this wheel here, somewhere, something even in the ballpark is what I was going for, and then having it the right length. I want it to go from this bottom support here, somewhere up into here at least. And so a lot of the ones that had the right curve were not anywhere close to long enough. So this one is at least in the ballpark. But you'll see, like with a lot of trailer fenders, you put it on the wheel and the, the curve, so the curve on this fender is just not sharp enough for the wheel to fit it snugly. So you end up with this little kick out either down here or up here. I'm gonna let the kick out be down here and then we're gonna modify this section down here. First though is the width of this thing. It's too wide. The fender is currently wider than the tire. To figure out how much I want to narrow it down, try and bring this over to the edge here of one side of the tire, and then we'll measure over here to see how much excess we have. So it looks like I got almost two inches more than I want. I need to take a two inch strip out of the middle of this thing and then bring the two pieces together and weld them. All right, so I've got this adjustable square. This works great for stuff like this because I can, I can slide this thing back and forth and sort of adjust how far out I want this thing to be. So I find this very helpful on this stuff like this and also because we have this curved edge like this, it's really hard to get a regular tape measure on here accurately. All right, so now I've got my strip here marked out. I'm gonna take an inch and a half out the middle of this thing. All right, now we've got two halves here and they should, in theory, join up together and be very nice. But when I actually go to do that on these, they don't quite match up. Basically, this one has a bit of a more, a slightly more of a curve to it than this one. This one is a little bit flatter. If I hold the ends together over here, then you can see on this end, this one is poking up more. All right, so here's our fender, and this is all tacked up just using the cheap flux core welder. So that's why we got all this spatter and stuff that's from the flux core. I'm pretty happy with, I was actually able to get both ends to come together and sort of fix that the differential in the radii of these two pieces here. So it all came together. It looks pretty good, actually. If we look, try and sight down this thing. Like, I don't have any major dips in the middle or anything, it actually looks pretty flat all the way through here. I'm pretty happy with that. So far, it looks pretty good. I'm starting to like this thing. Let's go try it on the bike. All right, so put it on the bike. Look at that. That fits the tire quite perfectly, man. Tire, fender, awesome. Now we just have to worry about the, the sort of the radius. We have to sort of figure out what we're gonna do down here to sort of pull this in just a little bit. What I'm gonna try first is just notching the sides here and seeing how well that works in terms of being able to bend this stuff in and if it makes this look crinkled or not and how easily we can overcome that. So 
So I've marked it every half inch and I just found that this thing is about half an inch wide or so and so I could use that and mark on either side of it. That was a quick and easy way to do the radius like that. Doing it with this guy, eh, it's not straight, so not so easy. And the half inch, I just picked that randomly. I think that will work for me. Now we need to cut this. All right, so we've got our cuts made. So I have to cut them all the way, all the way into where it becomes flat again. Otherwise, it doesn't quite work. So we've got them both cut on either side. Looks kind of cool, actually. Like some sort of louvers or something. But the magic in this is that now we can kind of bend this thing in just ever so slightly. We can bend this. Yeah, that may be maybe too sharp right there. But I think I can make that work. I just need a lot more of them going up through here, and then I can have a nice, a smoother bend to this thing because this is a little bit sharp right here. So let's continue on up through there and we'll see how this this pans out. All right, so we got a bit of grinding dust here, but we also got a cool fender. So you take a look at this thing, it fits our wheel much nicer now. So something along those lines is where we should end up. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, I got a little bit crazier with the relief cuts than I had anticipated. I thought I would stop down here, ideally, but it went over there. I don't think, just looking at the way they look now, I don't think I'll have any problems filling this in with weld. It's just a lot of work. But at all these relief cuts, the secret to doing this stuff and making it work is having them closely spaced. I got half inch spacing here. That seems to work in this case. The smaller the spacing, the less you're gonna notice it, but also the more material you're gonna take out, so there's a balance there. So now it's time to just do a bunch of welding. All right, so when I go to weld this thing, it's going, the weld itself, the material, it's gonna to wanna to shrink together and whatnot, and it's gonna try and pull my radius together. So to try and combat that, what I'm gonna do is I've got some welding rod here. This is a TIG weld rod, filler material, 330 seconds diameter. I'm gonna cut this guy in half, and then we're gonna use, and then I'm gonna bend it to this radius, or to the radius of the wheel, and then I'm gonna tack it in here, and I'm gonna weld, sort of start welding to this thing first, and hopefully this will act as sort of a, a little extra strength and keep that radius in there while I fill everything else in. Well, yeah, something like that. All right, so now I've got two of these. All right, so I've got all of these tacked in, basically tacked on each little cut there, in between each cut. I tacked in every single one of those, and now I've got a fender that is nice and solid again. It doesn't bend on its own. So I should be good at this point to go and start filling these in. Go all the way down through here and fill everything in. All right, so I'm going at this with the TIG torch. I'm using the pulse setting on there as well. If you were a better welder, you wouldn't have to do that, but I find it easy at this point to do that. It gives me some assurance that I'm not gonna screw it up and burn a ginormous hole through there. Here it is. It's got kind of a, a pretty pattern to it there. We managed to get it welded up. It's not so pretty in terms of welds, but we did get the edges, which for me, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and weld this seam in the middle. Well, here is my lovely fender at this point. I've got the seams welded up. Everything is fully welded up on this thing. I actually kind of like it. It's an interesting look. And if the welds were better, I might actually leave it that way, but they're not. So we want to grind these things flat and ultimately we're going to paint this thing. Now I'm putting a brand new flap disc on my grinder for this one. All right, and then to get our little support rod here out of there, which I've already done on this side over here, I am using my little grinder here, my little cutoff wheel and just getting in there and cutting that thing out very carefully. 
All right, we've got a lot of dust again, but we do have a nice little fender. It's looking pretty good here. It's not perfect, and we're definitely gonna have to bondo this thing. You can see there are spots down here where it looks pretty nice, man. But then up here, we've got little divots, and that's from the welds, and it's mainly just from my fitment. My fit up when I put these two pieces together was not like absolutely perfect. Could have been better. And so I ended up with these highs and low spots here. But overall, it's not too shabby. Not too shabby. And we put some Bondo on here, this thing will be perfect. And we paint it up, we're good to go. And here it is mocked up on the bike there, just sort of sitting on the tire. And isn't that amazing? That we just made that, we just customized that fender to perfection my friends look at it look at how well it fits this tire amazing i didn't think it would come out quite so close to what we want here so i'm very happy with this lovely little fender all right i've gotten a little excited here and before we go to paint this thing I need to slow it down and actually make mounts for it first. What I'm planning to do next is a fender mount down here that attaches to this lower brace on the, on the wishbone and then a sissy bar that comes off of here, off of the axle adjusters back here. We specifically machined in a hole for that. So you can see this hole right here, we have one on the other side as well and we should be able to make a little bracket that fits onto there and then and then off of that bracket will come our sissy bar. And then that will give us like three points of attachment, one down here and then two up here on either side of the, of the tire. Should be enough. The only thing I'm not really sure about at this point is adjustability. So, cause this is a hard tail and everything and we're mounting, mounting the fender essentially to the frame, whereas the wheel has its axle adjuster here. And so that can move and it will increase or decrease the gap between the the tire and the fender is that going to be significant enough to make it look really weird at some point it'd be nice if i had some sort of adjustment ability on the fender mounts themselves so i could move this thing in and out to a degree i quite i haven't quite figured out how i want to do that or if that's even necessary at this point so but that is all going to be a different video. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it's helpful to you and get you the chopper fender of your dreams. This is a classic thing to do. This trailer fender to chopper fender conversion sort of thing that we just did, this modification. It's, it's the way to go if you don't have the cash to buy some fancy chopper specific fender you make your own. And this is the, one of the cheapest ways of doing it and one of the most accessible ways in terms of tools. If you have a welder and a grinder, you're all the way there. This fender cost me like $25 to get this fender. And then the rest of it is just sweat equity, putting the time in to actually do it. And it took me probably about 10 hours maybe. I spent one good long day and then a little bit of time on another day and this is where we're at. There's still more effort to be done, but now we have a fender and we didn't, and we only spent $25. So yeah, next video, we'll make some mounts for this thing and a sissy bar and it's going to be wicked. I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.